All right, and we're back. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. A little, little sound malfunction. But uh, so yeah, I mean, like, I wouldn't. Have, I I guess like the whole thing is just like trying to get the organization to pay you to entertain them. Right? right. Is that what it is? I've done some sober home shows through other people that paid. Uh, so I know theoretically they will pay, but if we're cold calling these places, it's yeah. it's kind of like, hey, do you want to pay us to do something? Yeah. You know, it's kind of yeah. like doing it as a charitable thing. Yeah. And we do shows for free all over in LA, yeah. so it could work. Yeah, but, I wouldn't mind doing it local. Like, I don't have to travel anywhere and not yeah. get paid. I'll do that for charity. Hell you know, yeah. Like, totally. No problem. I mean, it just it seemed like a just a good idea anyway, because it's already like a built-in audience and right. everybody uh, laughter is the best medicine too. Totally. You know you're what I mean? You're doing something good for them. You're getting stage time out of it. Yeah. But it's the process of calling all those places that makes you just want to get drunk right there. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I just, like, like I worked with a shady person once who was trying to do one of those like rehab shows, but we yeah. weren't going to the, to them. Yeah. We, like threw a show at a club and like recruited them to come to the comedy club. Right. 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 I was almost treating it like a bringer. Yeah. And it was great because like a bunch of people came out, but the club was pissed because they're like, no one drinks. Right. Like you gave them all free tickets <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're not making money on drinks. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that, sobriety that, crowd is a club's worst nightmare. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Which they charge like five bucks for anyway. Right. Minimum. Um, anyway. Yeah, guys, let's, do, let's do this podcast. Cool. Uh, this episode is brought to you by bullymake.com. You guys. Go get yourself a, a box that gets delivered to your door every month. Or if you don't want every month, you can just try it once, just a one-time box. And it's for your dog. You guys get boxes delivered to your house for yourself, all kinds of cool goodies and treats and clothes and healthy food. What about your dog? He's got to eat healthy too. So the box will deliver you three to four bags of healthy treats plus two to three toys that is uh, guaranteed that your dog's not going to tear them up in the first couple of days. That's why it's called Bully Make. It's for people that have those dogs that always figure out how to rip those toys apart like I do. <laughs> um, I use it. I've had like the same toys for like two months already, and the dog's still just like chomping on them, and they're, they're good. They're still good to go. And that like never happens with me because I have a pit bull. Um, <laughs> so anyway, guys, go to bullymake.com, and you're going to get $10 off if you use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, HOME. And also, don't forget to go to dmcwatch.com. If you guys think about getting a new watch or maybe you want to get something for Father's Day is coming up, um, what are you going to do dad like that for and get him like a stupid fossil? Yeah. <laughs> and you're walking around with like all the other dads. Oh, I got a fossil too. Fuck that shit, bro. DMC watch. It's DeLorean Motor Company. This guy's <laughs> made the fucking DeLorean for Back to the Future. Wow. That's the coolest Father's Day gift ever. I'm wearing one right now. I fucking love this thing. I'm wearing a DeLorean on my t-shirt right, right now, but not the watch. We're big 80s <laughs> nerds. I don't know if you guys figured that out yet. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's a, it's a really classy looking watch. I get compliments all the time. If you guys are gonna go check it out, there's uh, several different styles. They just released like like three new styles this month. Um, just go check it out, and just when you go check it out, make sure you use the link in the description. Uh, that way, uh, you support the podcast when you go check it out. And that's pretty much it. We're here with my co-host Kevin Lyons. Hey everybody. And our guest today is Sammy o- Obeed. Obeyed. Right? Obeyed. Obeyed. I've said it. Obeyed. I've said Obeyed. I've, I've tried every single one. Every variation. They all, <laughs> all leads to the same path. It's all kind of spelled the same. Yeah. But it, yeah, Sammy Obeyed is here with us today. Yo. And uh, this is the Homeschooled Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Let's do this. What's up? What song is this? Group love? No, I never heard it. I have, yeah. It's cool, I like it. Now we're off to a good start. <laughs> we, us- we usually talk during the songs, but I've never heard that song before, and I was digging it, and so I was just like, quiet, <laughs> oh, okay. just listening. I'm I, like, I think I want to download this song. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if we were allowed to talk during it. Oh, you no, can we, do whatever you want. It's actually <laughs> better because they, they won't be able to really get you that much for copyright. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, that was weird. That stupid fucking microphone. But I'll edit it together. It's all right. Good. Um, Sammy, how was your day today? Uh, it was good, man. I, I had a, uh, a clip go viral today, and I've just been um, handling trolls, slaying trolls. Oh, really? that, isn't that the best? Slaying trolls, yeah. That's the best. I love reading the trolls. 
What's the video? Calming people down. It's a video that I posted the other day about Israel Palestine, some stand up. Okay. That uh, I filmed it in January, but it, it was very relevant this week. So um, uh, I submitted it to Now This Politics and they posted it. Wow. Um, That's and, awesome, man. Yeah. It's been weird, though, because I mean, I, I posted stuff about Israel Palestine before, man. It's a tricky subject and you'll get a lot of hate from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I posted on my own channel a few days ago and I was got a, getting a lot of hate from the Jewish side. And then they posted on Now This, and I was getting a lot of hate from the Palestinian side. And it's just like, the, it was just very subtle ways of it was differently presented. And it's just so interesting how a very little subtlety like that can piss off either side, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I've been just, you know, slaying trolls uh, the last two days. <laughs> Does the bit kind of favor one side? It's, I, I mean, I like to think it's down the middle. And okay. I think that, that people have a problem with that because people like to be on very much, you know, yeah. Uh, they don't you, like neutral. Yeah, exactly. They when you, when you're when you're slaying yeah. these trolls, when you're reading their comments, yeah, are you taking it personally or are you just laughing at them? Uh, so some of them I laugh at. I guess th today was a little more personal because it's pal because I'm Palestinian, so uh -huh. it's coming from people of a kin. You know, mm. they're you know basically saying that I'm not like you know uh, I'm being too insensitive to Palestinians or whatever. So I'm I'm more just kind of on the defensive today. Okay, you know. Whereas when it's like the the other day it would be like you know death to all Palestinian terrorists you know like Israel forever like you're a fucking troll you know like <laughs> dude they're saying that shit yeah oh yeah oh my god oh they say the yeah. worst shit on the yeah. internet bro yeah. I know that but Jesus <laughs> that's what you've been dealing with all day yeah <laughs> but I'm not, I'm used to it because I, I I posted some sketches on the topic before and it's like I have a sketch from four years ago that went up and I, I every day I get a new comment on YouTube from somebody on one of the sides just you know mm -hmm. just, just saying death to the other side yeah. it's crazy it's insane do you like try to ignore them sometimes or do you more like just go after them so it depends on what's going on in yeah. my life you know if i have to, if <laughs> it I depends have on to what run, kind of day you're having <laughs> yeah i've always wanted to like create a show about a guy who who just uh, you know a guy or a girl who goes out and just kills people who talk shit on the internet <laughs> like an actual troll slayer yes you yeah, know to funny. somebody who has the time to really make people pay for the, the evil shit that <laughs> they, they say. They kind of did a little you know? bit of that at the end of Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Do you remember that? Did movie? They, oh, I didn't. I didn't see it. I don't know you didn't see is. it? No, no, oh no. man, it was so great because like uh, it was when um what year did they make that in the nineties or early two thousands? And um, they were making a Jane Silent Bob movie because yeah. there was a comic book. Yeah. Like, in the, like, this is all inside the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jane Silent Bob were getting pissed off because all these trolls on the internet were talking shit about them because right. they're making the movie. And so they, they, were, they went to Hollywood to stop the movie from being made. And then w when that didn't happen, <laughs> they printed out all the addresses of every single troll. And they went house to house. They're like, Jeez. are you baby mama 6425? <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then they just punched the shit out of them. You know, it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dude, there you it's go. fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, did, can so can one of you guys hand me a water? Yeah, for me. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. I got uh, it. Might have to two man at that shit. You open I the door, you grab it. it. Yeah. Thank you, man. Sorry, I forgot to grab it before we started. Um, so fuck, dude. Yeah, that's and we were, we were kind of talking about that yesterday. Just like the, it's only it's like it's kind of a good thing when you start getting hated on. Yeah. Because, like, the more public you are and, like, the more you're known, like, you, you th then obviously the more haters you're going to have. Well, it's also important to have. have the haters because the haters do bring the comments. And even though they're fucking hateful comments, it brings activity to your page. Yeah. So it's good. If you if you have people hating you on your comment section, it's still that's good. that's good. No such thing you as want bad that publicity. because it brings right? more. It kind of tricks the algorithm too. Like, oh, there's a lot of action going on in here, and so they put your they'll push your video more. You know what I mean? Right. It's like it's good right, when you right. get haters. So totally. that's why I never. I used to get pissed off when I would see shit. You know, so like on our channel, good. and it was just, oh man, absolutely. But it's just like I love the hate. Not yeah. really, but it's just like when, like the the internet troll hate because it just keeps action on your page is great. It makes them look very weak. Yeah. Doesn't it? It makes the haters or Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh for sure. When they man, sometimes I want to just like sometimes I, I I won't even say anything cuz like you'll get sucked in too then you'll look really weak. Right. And I just try not to like cuz like cuz it's so easy to get them. 
you know, right? Because right, they're just thinking, they're thinking so close minded, and, and and it's so easy just to like, oh man, I can take this, take this guy down. But like, that's why I never take it personally. I just I just deliver like more bait to them to fucking get mad <laughs> at. You know, you give them the bait. That's the rule. It's like something my grandfather never ta- always taught me. He's like, don't go for the bait. Never go for the bait. <laughs> Fuck with them. You know. Yeah. Was that a fishing lesson or was that <laughs> No, that was a life lesson. That was an actual life lesson. They, he was he'd always test everybody and yeah, see if yeah. they'd go for the bait. He he tried to get it underneath everybody's wow. skin, but you could never get underneath his cuz yeah. he knew not to take the bait. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so yeah, that's what you've been doing all day. What do you what do you, you have tonight you doing any shows or anything? Uh no, I was going to do a show, but uh I, I changed the plans. I'm I'm flying out in the morning to Where you to going? Oregon. To Oregon? Yeah, what yeah. club are you doing? I'm not doing a club. I'm doing a college. Oh, you're still in college? Yeah, yeah. So I'm flying to Medford, a small town in southern mm-hmm. Oregon tomorrow. Have oh, you ever so. been to Oregon? Oh, yeah, many times. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been to Portland a bunch this year already, actually. I've always wanted to go. I've always wanted to go to, like, just the northern part of the continent, just to, like, like what's the nation? Pacific like Northwest? There? Yeah, just uh, I just want to go up there. I actually just want to go hiking up there, too. But oh, it's beautiful. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it rains a lot there. You know, it's a lot, a lot of trees. Do you get a lot of time to go out and see the, you know? See the area. Uh, I I take whatever little time I can. Yeah. I mean uh, they have they have great weed in Oregon. And oh Washington, fuck yeah! Oh so we have I, weed here too. If you want to smoke. Weed. Oh okay. Oh, I'm good right now. But thank you. But <laughs> uh. But yeah, it's it's great. It's, it's you really fly in Southwest? Uh no, United Southwest doesn't fly to Medford. Oh yeah, you gotta go to Portland. Yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. Dude, I fucking Southwest has like been like real scary lately <laughs> with their oh, planes yeah. and then uh but they're so fucking cheap and I, I can fly out of Burbank and I fucking love it I was literally looking at flights to Portland today yeah and uh I was like I was just like on Expedia and I'm like fuck they're so expensive I went on, on Southwest and I was like oh fuck it's so much cheaper and I can fly to Burbank and I was then I'm just like fuck like everyone's like fucking like dying and shit on Southwest, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, I dude, uh, I almost fucking died. On, did I tell you this story? I told you this story. I almost yeah. fucking died on Southwest going to Phoenix like two weeks ago. Really? What? The fucking plane was just going like crazy, dude. It was like fucking on the land too, and yeah. like there was moments of just straight free falling. Really? And people were going like nuts, dude. It was fucking. It was it was insane. I was sitting there next to Joey Diaz on the plane, bro. It was fucking crazy. We were sitting there, and he's like. uh Everyone's screaming, like panicking. The lady next to me is like grabbing my arm, like you know what I mean. It was just, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I look over at Joey, and Joey goes, "Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die." <laughs> and then he starts laughing, and then he put his headphones on and just like blacked out. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, how the fuck do you train yourself to just black out in situations you don't want to be awake for? That's a veteran comic right there. Yeah, <laughs> been through but, a lot of turbulence. You know what, dude. I was talking to this. Uh, I was talking about this with someone the other day because I told someone that story, and they're just like, "Like, oh man, like did your life flash before your eyes? That whole shit." And I went like, "To be honest with you, no." And like, once I thought I was like, I might die. I thought to myself, "Okay, I might die. Let's like, let me just." I try to be like calm about the whole thing and be like, "Okay, yeah. this if if this is it, then this is you know this yeah. is it." And you know what the saddest thing is that I actually went like, "Well." cool like at least i don't have to email bookers and stuff anymore <laughs> you know what i mean like i was actually like man it's finally over you know like I, it's it, it's done absolutely i I, <laughs> I have this thing called the turbulence test it's the test to know if you're depressed or not so <laughs> when, when the when the plane starts shaking and like everybody's panicking and your first thought your first thoughts are like oh my family my pet like what are they gonna do without me like you're perfectly happy everything's fine yeah. If like baggage is falling out of the compartments and you're just like, eh, I could use a break. You're you're fucking sad. You're depressed. <laughs> <That's kind laughs> of where I was. Then it's I must like be really depressed because I actually <laughs> enjoy turbulence on the plane. Yeah. That's almost kind of like before. a roller coaster. <laughs> like I enjoy it. It doesn't bother me at all. Listen, I can it's handle like turbulence, coaster. but like when the plane's like going down, like what's going in, or right. like like he said, like if luggage starts flying, or if like <clears> if like fucking the things, the little oxygen things drop, like what's in your head at that moment? And like honestly, I was just kind of like, well whatever like i was just kind of like this you know the hustle's over finally you know right. what i mean and with my luck i get to heaven and it's like fucking matt taylor at the pearly gates is like did you bring 10 people you know <laughs> <laughs> go to the left line where there's sober home shows <laughs> uh but anyway man yeah um I'm glad you're in – well, you're leaving tomorrow, but I'm glad you're in town this week because I've been yeah. wanting to have you on the podcast for a while. Yeah. And then I saw you at uh, the Robin Hood mic. The Robin Hood, the yeah. And I was just like, oh, shit, good. Let me just – since you're in town, you know? Um, yeah. That's that's a really fucking hard mic, huh? It, I've had some, you know, some I've had good nights. Yeah. Um, but, like, the, that night 
when I when I ran into you there. And here's the thing: like, if you don't do it for a while, like I sometimes I'll do it like every Wednesday. Yeah. And and it's fine. And then right. like, if you, I, I I didn't do it for like a month or two, and then I went back when I saw you. Yeah. And I it was just it's just like really kind of. I thought you did great. I think Thanks, I think man. it's just your standards. You're you're uh you, when you don't do the mic for a while, you're yeah. you're, you're expecting a crowd laughter. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do other yeah. mics, and I I just sure. you know I know that I mean yeah. I've done some other mics recently, and like I, I mean you know the, the yeah they're, they're all bad. They're all bad. <laughs> like you kind of have to like gauge like oh they made a sound but the joke right. must be good you absolutely know, type of thing and but uh, that I don't know that particular night I just felt like. Man, I forgot how like tough this room is. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, there's like there's like there's like posts in the middle of the room. Like it's like yeah. you're talking around people. It's yes. a weird setup. You know, they should like completely block off that one side. Yeah, and just see everyone on the other side, so you don't have to right. like, look around these posts. Right, right. And then right. it would look more full. Totally, like packed in, and then like the stage is all the way on one side. That's what they should do. Dude, I I fucking you work you're working on some stuff too. I've been laughing about one of the things that you said. I actually told like two people. What is it? I was like, "Oh man, this guy's <laughs> joke the other day." <laughs> when you were talking about, when you were talking about like milk and and yeah, and, yeah. and cheeses and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, and you're and you said like, "What did you say?" You said like goat. I forget how you worded it. You said like goat cheese is the best, and you're like, <laughs> "I said I drink goat milk." Goat milk. I'm sorry. You're like goat yeah. milk is the best, and then, <laughs> and then he's like, and then he goes like. I mean, like when I say goat, I mean like greatest of all time. He was, he's like, which is, then you say which is whole milk. Is yeah, the, yeah, is the yeah. goat yeah, of, yeah. Milk. of milks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I thought that shit was so fucking. You know, it's weird because it's like I'm trying to. I have this whole bit on milk, and that's the that's the way in. And like when it's for a crowd of people our age, younger, it's like that's a solid way in. <laughs> but I do so many shows where it's like old people just staring at me, not knowing what the fuck I'm talking about. Do you really? Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, goat is an acronym, greatest of all. And even yeah. if I do, it does nothing, they're just still like, oh, no okay, idea. yeah, it just like it doesn't. It does. They're like, they still don't laugh. <laughs> it's yeah. just, you know, because so I they probably think you made that acronym up. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but if you're familiar with goat, then you know it, you yeah. know. If you so, do it in Boston, they're really familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it did well in Boston a few weeks ago when I was there. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. like like that term "goat" was like created for Tom Brady. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've never really heard it as much until Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Oh, I I know a lot of people use it in in the wrestling world, MMA world. Oh, do they? Yeah, it's like a big term in the MMA. And then obviously, like when it comes to like rappers, I know people always talk about rappers yeah. with goat. And then I think with this recent like lebron versus jordan thing people are using goat a lot so it's a very topical term amongst yes. the youth you know yes anybody under 35 i would say dude i thought that was so funny <laughs> well, thank I you i was sitting next to hey. joey too and him and i were like giggling, giggling <laughs> that's back. great dude, um you said that you do a lot of rooms where there's older you said you did colleges i would think it's the opposite so where are you yeah. performing where they're older well comedy magic club is probably my home club mm-hmm. here in, in in la and and some nights especially during the weeknights it can just be a very older crowd um and then i i've been doing a lot of corporates lately so like i did a corporate yesterday in anaheim and it was i mean it was pretty much over 40 over 50 yeah. around everybody what about casinos uh i haven't done any casinos in a while but i i used to do them mm-hmm. Pretty frequently, and yes, those are those are those are oldies as well. <laughs> those are oldies, but goodies. I've been doing yeah. uh, I've been doing a couple of casinos lately, and uh, yeah, man, they're usually pretty older. Yeah, uh, I did one. Where was I? I was in Vegas last month, and there was like that was like the youngest casino crowd I've ever seen. What? Which? Well, which one? Where? Where the fuck? I was at Rampart mm-hmm. Casino. It's not on the Strip. It's it's like it's actually like a country club. There's like a golf oh. course there. Interesting. Um, and and when I and <laughs> the youngest rate, like casino crowd I ever yeah. did, and they were probably fifty. Fifties, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like fifty. So they were yeah. like fifty through eighty, yeah. as opposed to like every other casino gig I've ever did are usually like fucking like seventy oh, through yeah. ninety. I've done casino shows where the front row is just all like uh those are like electric wheelchairs <laughs> yeah right, that right they rolled in that's like, like they reserve those spots for that do you have jokes specifically for older people no no not, not at all. all i mean i think that my material for the most part is pretty universal I, I mean i think more than anything i can relate with older people than younger because uh i mean i talk a lot about like marriage mm-hmm. and like husband and wife mm-hmm. little tiffs and things like that and uh i think that like you know older people really can relate to that oh absolutely and then like lately i've been t- I'm doing a lot of bits about my nephew and uh 
you know, because like uh, he, his his dad's not necessarily like you know around, and and, and sometimes like I kind of take over like that part of it and uh we <laughs> so i've been doing bits about like that and now i've been getting a lot of guys that are like from 30 up who are like dads kind of like really going like dude that shit like remind me of my son so much you know what i mean so that's kind of where, I, where i'm relating right now <laughs> that's do great. you have to pee no no not at all oh, sorry is that I, just I, something I, you do <laughs> I, I, I don't do this all the time it's just like sometimes it's just it keeps me it's uh, a sensory thing yeah, like yeah. me like like i'm just tapping my foot oh, okay Sorry, if it bothers you, I can. It stop. doesn't bother me. I just was worried that you yeah. had to pee. Don't and move like, no, 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 at all. <laughs> Don't move. Stand completely still. So, a couple of things I wanted to ask you about. I recently saw this clip online. You were on like this show, mm-hmm. and you basically told off the judges. <laughs> 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 oh, what man. show was that? That was the last comic standing. It was last comic. It standing. wasn't the judge. It was the executive was it? producer. It was in 2015, so like three, about three oh, years ago. Oh, okay. So you just posted it. Yeah, I posted it because I, it's, um, I mean, it's technically property of NBC. Like, I, it's not something you can post on like YouTube. Gotcha. So I just posted a very short clip of it. Okay. Well, so what what happened? Uh, so last comic standing is executive produced by Wanda Sykes. Okay. And uh, everybody who makes it past the first round has to run their second round set by her. So we do it in a room, just her. It's just her. And there's like camera p- people filming. Wow, no audience. No audience. And you do. You Is run, she sitting? She's sitting there. You run your three minutes by her, and she gives you her feedback. And of course, it's all televised. It's like you have mm-hmm. to like, if she gives you advice, you fucking take that shit. Do they air that part of it on the show too? Um, uh, they air some of it. Like they don't air everybody's sure. bit, but like they show moments of her giving people advice. Okay. So what happened was um, I went in there. I did my my uh, three minutes, which was um, – it was three minutes that I had already done on TV. I did it on Conan. So, mm-hmm. like, my plan was, like, I'm going to do some newer stuff in the first round and then do the last three minutes of my Conan set in the second round. Shit that's already tried and true. Bang, bang, bang. I'm like, I got this. I go in there. I do my three minutes tried and true. And she's just like, yeah, those last two jokes – weren't working for me which are, were at the time were my best jokes of all time huh. those oh, were my man. goat of jokes that's yeah. like the ultimate yeah. internet troll right there yeah. <laughs> yeah it was rough i mean they're 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 big room jokes like it's good when there's a lot of people in there but just wanda she didn't like it but those were the jokes that everybody knew me for uh so it was just like to me it was just like she told me like yeah those jokes didn't land from like I, I was just like wanda believe me they work like mm-hmm. you know it was just like i'm not gonna just sit here and think beca- like if i did these jokes at an open mic and, and and a person didn't laugh, I would do them again somewhere else and learn if they were good or not. That's the same thing here. Yeah. You know? So I just kind of just told her that up front, and she was just like, okay, man, like, whatever. And so they <laughs> kind of packaged it in a way where, um, like, the guy – there was a guy who was getting advice before me, and he's like, if you don't take Wanda Sykes' advice, what kind of idiot are you? Then they cut to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. And then – but I, I will give it to Wanda. I mean, she, like – she – I do think she had good insight, but like she was wrong. She just because she didn't, they didn't land for her. Didn't mean they weren't going to get a big applause in that room. Right. That room, you know? Right. Um, uh, and then she straight up told me she was like, cause I do, I, 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 I do a lot of math jokes cause I have a background in math. And so was like, I was telling her that she's like, that's cool and all Sammy, but like America's like 33rd in math. So like where are the dick jokes already, you know? And then I was okay. like, I, you know, f- fair enough point. She's like, you know, why I booked you is cause you did that that Palestinian joke in the first mm-hmm. round. That's why I booked you. She's like more of that. I'm like, but I talk about other stuff too, you yeah. know? So I wish she saw the video that I posted today, oh, but <laughs> <laughs> dude. Um, yeah. As far as like how they edited in the guy before he was like, whoever doesn't take one to yeah. sex advice is an idiot. Yeah. To whoever who has ever said that sentence is a fucking idiot. <laughs> I guarantee you they're the only person who's ever said, whoever doesn't listen to one to sex is an idiot. Bro, sh- when was the last time she's she's done stand up? <laughs> Not only that, but you're telling a professional stand up comedian who works for a living as a comic, you're telling him the jokes didn't land for me in a room that doesn't have an audience. Yeah. And then and a real comic would never do that. <laughs> 
and and the camera two camera people came up to me after like that those were great jokes <laughs> just yeah. like could you have interrupted maybe said something like hey excuse me yes. wanda we like the jokes we're in here too just say you're an executive <laughs> producer and we need more ethnic shit on this show <laughs> right, right. don't say like well those jokes didn't land for me no they just didn't fit what you're looking right, for right, right, you know right. what i mean like tell him that in private. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was funny, but like we really want some ethnic shit for the show. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I submit. So then I submit like three other Palestinian jokes, and they were way too edgy for the program. Yeah. So I, you know, ended up just doing something completely different. <laughs> Make up your damn mind, Wanda. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what do yeah. you want? How far did it go with last comic scene? Uh, I, so I made it. Th- I, the next round is where I got eliminated. Uh. So I changed up my set because of what she said. Right. Um, and the set went well, better than I could have even imagined. Still didn't get it. So huh. it was it, tough it, competition. It, it, it's there. a casting thing. I mean, there were, there were absolutely hundred percent people who did, you know, did better than me, had great sets and should have moved on. There were a couple people who I think they just wanted to cast. Mm-hmm. That's all, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. Does that show still happen? Uh, no, that was the last time it had happened. It was in 2015. So they don't do them anymore. No, but I, I think I, I think they might bring it back. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like that show could have done so much better. I feel like that show could have been like 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 the American Idol or like The Voice and it didn't do that much with it. It's just uh, yeah, they I, never like really invested in their winners afterward. Right. Like they right. they were just like we want the audience now. Right. Like we just want them to watch stand-up comics p- compete. But like your winner, they should have like really invested in them in the future and like given them like you know, you're guaranteed X amount of spots on a sitcom, guest spots, eventually your own sitcom. Right. Um, a freaking special. Yeah. Like. Yeah, a few of an the winners. NBC is special. They just give them like a fucking right. half hour special on NBC. Right. Air it on one night only type deal. Like right. they've inv- they're just they're just like okay, you won, good for you, bye. Right. Hey, you just you look historically at the people who won and like what did they actually get out of it? Right. Um, that fan. Right. That fan. And then wasn't it Ralphie that was second place to that fan? Yeah, Ralphie was second place. I mean, like, I know Amy Schumer got, like, third or something mm-hmm. like that. She was, like, I think Amy Schumer's the most successful person who was on the show. Right. Um, you basically want to want to lose. You know, right. you want to you you like, come in, like, second place. On yeah, right, 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 exactly. <laughs> but that was, that was fucking crazy. And then, like, the other thing I was going to ask you about is, uh, didn't you do, like, was that you? Like like a while ago, you did like a show a day. Yeah, I did a thousand days in a row. A thousand, a thousand days in a row. Shows yeah. in a row. That's incredible. Yeah. And you man. did it all over. I did it all over. It ended up being it was like something like three thousand. Sh- well, it was like two thousand seven hundred shows in a. But in your a goal was one thousand. My goal was a thousand days in a row completed. It wasn't the goal from the beginning, but at some point I set that goal. Damn. Yeah. And you were just like, oh, let's go for a thousand. Yeah, well, it was after day th- three, day three sixty five. I, I was gonna stop at three sixty five, and someone told me that Hal Sparks once did two years in a row. So I was like, I can either just stop or I can try to beat that record. Yeah, so you just went into a thousand. So I was like, yeah, I mean, what's a what's you know, a, a two years that's you know, seven hundred something. I just gotta like, what's a nice round number on top of that? A thousand. Yeah. And so that's what, cra- that's insane, man. That's awesome. So you're like where around three sixty five when you decided to do that? Yeah. So around three sixty five, you're like, I'm at, you know, I've been working every day for the last year. Yeah. And, and did did you go and just say like, okay, now let let me go out and book the rest of the thousand shows and make sure that I guaranteed to have it? Yeah, I mean the the foreseeable future. You know, I wouldn't like book every. I didn't book yes. everything from there, but kinda, I just tried to kind of can't. No, you can't. But I, I I kept things busy. I mean, like important days, like holidays and stuff. I would I would plan that shit in advance. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no, it just I, what, I took what, it. Did, would you have time. like a plan B? What if like some show canceled? Most of the time, I had a plan B. There was a couple nights where I didn't have a plan B, and I had to shuffle to find one at the last minute. Those were some pretty stressful nights. Mm-hmm. Um, but it got close a couple times, but it didn't happen. I mean, the closest I ever got, I had to beg a guy to to just let me on his bar stage. Yeah, yeah. Damn, dude. And is, is there is this like documented anywhere? Are you like officially the record holder? So, so I, I tried to submit it to Guinness Book, mm-hmm. Guinness Book World Records, but they um, they said it would I would have to pay something like uh, two hundred thousand dollars. What? And they would have to send out an appraiser who would live with me, and I'd have to give the appraiser quarters to live. So like I would have to put them up in a hotel or something. But you already did the thousand. I well, this was before. This was on the way to it. This was like I was oh, in, in the middle gotcha. of it, and I was like, you know. 
So they had, so they wanted to send somebody just to live with you and yeah. and watch you, make exactly. sure that you did comedy exactly. every night. So I could have, in retrospect, you know, maybe I could have taken some loans for some people, got the like, finished. Eh, that's yeah. a lot of money, dude. Yeah, so it's, it's an informal record. I, I mean. I, I urge anyone to try to beat it. It's a horrible thing. That's <laughs> it's a horrible, <laughs> horrible thing. Man, that's inc- that's yeah. insane. That's yeah. crazy, though. Congratulations, and, and it was man. Thank you. <laughs> just every – it was all over. All over. I mean, uh, there was a couple times where I was invited internationally, and I had to turn it down because it just – It would have fucked it, it, fucked fucked it up. up. So I went Damn. to Canada. That was it. That was as far as I went. But I, East Coast, West Coast. Wow, dude. Yeah. And then yeah, and you probably had several night, several shows in one night sometimes too, right? Yeah, I but had, that wouldn't count, right? You were just counting the days in a as row. As long as I needed, as long as I did one show per day, I was good. Okay, so it was a thousand yeah. days, not a thousand, thousand shows. days. So it ended up being like like said like two thousand right. seven hundred shows. Yeah, yeah. I averaged about two point five shows a night. It's a pretty cool accomplishment. <laughs> I mean the only, I mean the only way it could have been documented is if you like you recorded every single set with right. like so near the end the date I, on it near the end I started uh, having someone film like as a documentary and then I was taking pictures of myself on stage every day but like what I did is you know I I noted everywhere I was and I had witnesses there every night so like if there was ever an issue that was my thing but like going back I wouldn't go how long all that. ago was that this was uh I started in 2010 ended in 2013 damn. That's a lot, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, what, did you learn anything from it? Or, jeez, oh, I mean, I learned everything. There's more shows than one. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm life. just like, I mean, <laughs> it's just like such like a crazy feat, and like it, it, it taking so long. Like, right. how did it, how did it ch- how did it change your comedy? Well, um, I, I definitely found more of my voice. Yeah, I already I I had already been doing comedy a few years when I started, so it was like it wasn't like I just started fresh. I yeah. kind of I had an idea of who I was, but mm-hmm. I had a journey to undergo. And then by the end, I really f- feel like I understood my voice more. Um, and it was crazy because on the last night I did a thousand and one. I just threw an extra one in there, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I I sold out my home club in San Francisco at the the punchline. That was a one thousand and one thousand and one. And it was Dude, like, I love that club. Uh, it was so great, right? And and, and, and it was, there was like a line outside. I sold it out, and it was like it was a lot of it was my friends. It was like people I knew from high school, people I knew from college, people who are some of my original fans who I knew after college. And it was, you know, I I I, I take pride in that I have a very diverse group of friends in every way, you know, from education to age to ethnic background to just just personalities. And all these people were in the room at the same time. And I realized, like, that's who I am. I am the synthesis, if you will, of all these different people. Okay. You know? Yeah. And it was kind of that realization that I had at the end that, you know, some people say my comedy's smart, whatever, you know, it's kind of smart, but I like to consider it very broad. Um, And that's why sometimes when I do a joke in a room, one person doesn't get it. But in the on the grand spectrum of things, if you have a lot of different kinds of people in a room, everybody will have something for them. Did That's you the, did you video that that show? Yeah, I did video that show. Yes. How long did you do? Uh, I probably did like an hour nice. fifteen. Killing like it. That. <laughs> Sammy Obey, I yeah. bet you killed it. It was great. It was one definitely one of the best sets of my life. Built in standing. Oh, I was already gonna get a standing over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. I was gonna do <laughs> because I I, I kind of bombed the night before at Largo. That's where I did my thousandth day at Largo. And I, I kind of bombed, but it was like an intentional bomb. It was, I was just so tired, yeah. and I just wanted to keep going and rambling and rambling. Just yeah, just, yeah. Let me just get this over with. <laughs> right. And then tomorrow in front of everybody. But then, yeah, exactly. Know, it's all my it. real friends. <laughs> uh, how, <laughs> lo- how long did you like to, when was the first break you took? Like what day off? I was uh, ask that, that well, I actually, so I had to perform on the thousand and second day because this guy, <laughs> this guy wanted to give me an award in front of like the Palestinian community in San Francisco. So I went and did this show for like Palestinian families. It was fucking just completely bombed. It was like just from riding that high of a standing O, yeah. and then the next night being in front of families and yeah. just, you know it's, that's it, how it goes, dude. Yeah, exactly. And so I ended, you know, I could have ended on that high, you know, that high yeah. note, but I ended just like, okay, I'm gonna go home and take ten days off now. Did you take ten days? I took ten days off. Ten days straight. Amazing. Well yeah. earned. Yeah. <laughs> well deserved. Oh, so did you good. know what to do with yourself with those ten days, or were you just kind of like, you know, everybody was like, dude, you're gonna, you're gonna freak out when you get it. You're gonna like be craving it. Like at that point, like I wanted time off so bad, yeah. I didn't give a fuck. I just, I, it was a lot of t- t- time for introspection. I mean, the thing is, I was a broken man at that point. Really? Yeah. Those those last three hundred days fucked me up, like really, really bad. There was a breakup near the end. 
Uh, there was like this medication I took that gave me mm. anxiety, and I started going. I, I had you suicidal hate, thoughts at some point. Hate God what damn. you do. Yeah. After yeah. a while, like you need to take a little little like right. breaks. Like you, after a while, you'll hate your own fucking act. Right. I hate my act right now. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Right. I do a thousand yeah. days in a row. I fucking yeah. hate my act right now. Yeah. I, but like you'll it fuck, would go in waves, obviously. Yeah. But if like, you're I hating would, yeah. what you're doing every night. It's like this kind of really fucking defeats the purpose. Right. But you're a real comic, and then I'm sure by like day nine of your vacation, you're like, I got to go to some fucking spots next. Yeah, week. yeah. By the end <laughs> of it, I was like, I got some new material. I'm ready to go. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Uh, but then that first night that you took off, we were just like, oh, it feels so good to not have to be anywhere. I just wa- I watched Netflix. I just kicked back <laughs> and I watched Netflix. It was amazing. You just caught up on like so many shows that you had missed. Yeah. Did you watch Breaking Bad and oh, shit? Oh, I watched some Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Though. Congrats, though. That's awesome. Thank you. That's really cool. Thank That's you. so fucking crazy. How did, did, you, did you feel like you were going to like, I don't know, like, like, did you feel like, like you were going a little crazy? Oh, I, w- I was insane. I felt like my head was going to explode. I was l- in physical pain. A lot of it was it was it was all like tied in. It's hard to tell what was what. It was like the breakup, the medication, the stress of having to finish. Yeah. A thousand days. It was all in my head and I was in constant pain. Every, like I would wake up and there would be like I felt like someone was jamming an ice pick into my head every day. It's the only way yeah. I can describe it. Man, it's a lot of spots. I'm sure you, you know, became a better comic out of it. <laughs> I did. I, I mean, did. I'm sure you, you, I did. I'm sure you did. And it, 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 but comedy became it was like a medicine for me. It was like I would feel like shit during the day. Then I would do stand up and I would it would I would feel OK. Uh-huh. You ever get a lot of <laughs> you ever get a lot of bookings now and then you just go like. Are you having like flashbacks? Like, I do. I don't yeah. need it. I don't, I, let me take one day off. I don't want to do that many in a row. When I look at my schedule, I'm like, I have ten days in a row. I'm like, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can make it. I did a thousand. I could do ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to fuck remind dude. myself it's okay. Well, fuck, dude. That's really cool. You got to go up in front of your, your family and friends in your hometown. Yeah. And that club yeah, is so cool. cool. Yeah, definitely. Do you ever, would you stay at the hotel around the corner? Well, no, you probably stayed. With no, your family, right? yeah, I never, never stayed. stayed have you ever stayed at that hotel around the corner? Uh, no, they no, put no, no I have not. The hotel's so fucking awesome because it? there's a restaurant in the lobby that has like the best chia pino I've ever had in my life. Really? It's so fucking good. Like I want to get booked <laughs> there again just so I can go eat that. <laughs> it's fucking awesome, dude. One thousand and one. Isn't it always yeah. like? You know that like if you have an important show coming up, you want a bomb before it. Yeah, Isn't that get weird? it out like, of your system. Get it out of your system because you know there's yeah. like when you have like a bunch of good sets, you know there's a bomb coming. Yeah, right, right. And I'm like, and then if I have something really important going, I'm like, oh man, let me just go get like this bomb out of the way. Like, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. So like, then like, like on purpose, like you will literally just tell your joke shit. I won't purpose. throw a set, but I'll kind of be like before I have that, before I have that important night, the night before I'll go do like a mic. Yeah. Like I won't throw it on purpose, and then. <laughs> This is so weird. Like, I probably shouldn't do this. Like, before I have, like, an important set, um, the night before, I won't work on the material that I'm doing the next night. Mm. It's probably really stupid. But, like, prior to that, like, every day up until then, I was doing only the material that I'd been working on to do on the important night. Right. And then the night before, I'm like, let me just get this bomb out of the way, and I'll just do new shit. And I feel like it really makes me, like – it's like a little vacation, like a little treat for myself, and it relaxes my mind. You'd be like, I get to work on something that I want to fucking do tonight. Yeah, you know, and just yeah, no, keep totally. Mind fresh. Yeah, it's, it's for you, you know. Totally, man. Yeah. Let me do some shout outs here. We're almost wrapping up here. Um. Well, but well, before you do yeah, that, so yeah. so that so that thousand and one nights, that was like a really big feat. Do you have yeah. any other goals that that you're setting? Up? Like, is there another type of thing that I was you want to do? I'm so glad you fucking reminded. Yeah. Me. Is there no? Is it like <laughs> no? Because it's so cool. I mean, like you set yourself this yeah, almost impossible goal sounding now? goal, and you what? fucking nailed it, and right. you had this break, and you know, is there, uh, what else? What else do you see yourself wanting to do? I, I I do have some goals. They're not quite like that, just because after doing that specific thing, I was like, I would never want to subject myself to this kind of pain again yeah i i think the goal setting thing is cool and i like doing things where you're counting something but nothing of this kind of nature where like i have to complete it and it's that oh, stressful yeah. so my current goals i'm trying to get a, t- a, a show on tv i've been pitching a show for a couple versions of a show for like three years now um and it's about numbers and math and stuff um and then the characters or is it more like a reality it, well the inception of it was like a hosted show by me hosted by me just kind of a to camera or like almost kind of like daily show kind of format even though just different style and everything like that 
And then uh, I shot a pilot last year for True TV, and, it, and it, they ended up pushing it into a scripted way because they didn't like the non-scripted mm-hmm. kind of style. But I didn't really like the way it was scripted. Uh-huh. But it could go either way. It's it's now flexible to the point where I could pitch either version of it. Yeah. Um. So that's a, that's a more immediate goal. Um. Uh, <clears throat> um. Uh. This whole Israel Palestine thing, I'm trying to kind of build something off of that. My kind of dream would be to do like a documentary or something where. Um, We have Arab comedians and Jewish comedians doing a kind of a tour in the region. Uh, That's kind of a broader thing, but there's that. Uh, I have I I started doing a bit two years ago that kind of became a thing that a lot of my fans at least got behind where I said that I'm running for president in 2036. (laughs) So that I would say is the most comparable thing to it, because if I run for president in 2036 and I'm technically running right now, it's the lo- it would be the longest running presidential campaign in history. Oh wow. Because nobody's ever run for president for uh for 20 years. I started running in 2016. I announced my candidacy on Twitter in 2016. Did, how how active are you on your campaign? Uh, uh I mean, I you know, I do bits in my stand up. I'm I'm always writing more bits like it's I have a little segment on my website dedicated to it. I have a shirt that says obeyed 36 that I've sold in maybe 30 states. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I have a growing <laughs> I have a growing uh, fan base, a growing. Is I mean, it, a did growing you look into? Is there anything like technically that you have to do to cons- to be considered like that is campaigning? To officially be running. Like I, officially I'm gonna run. I'm gonna look into it. I'm yeah. gonna look into it soon. Like I've been trying to. What I've been trying to do lately is I've been trying to like find a local office that I can run for to get some uh, start getting some political experience under my belt. Okay. Um, I might do something really simple like school board or something like that. Um, or just find like a, 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 a like a be run for House of Reps in like a place that nobody gives a shit about. You know? Well, yeah. Well, you're a mathematician. <laughs> I'm sure you could figure it out. Yeah. I'm wor- so I'm working on that. But I, I, I think technically you're 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 theoretically once you announce you're running, you're running. You know, I think that's what. <laughs> it's like in the office. I declare bankruptcy. Right. Like, you can't just say it. <laughs> right. Well, look at all these candidates who you know you, they're like, oh, The Rock says he may or may not run. Yeah. It's like they don't uh, they officially announce it at a strategic moment because it's good for that moment to build yeah. their momentum me i fuck it i've already announced it <laughs> so, so i'm running <laughs> yeah well you heard it here first guys yeah yeah 20, it's official six you gotta go 2036 for sammy Obey. november 4th 2036 it's a tuesday oh obama to obeyed <laughs> yes with the obeyed obama that's uh, that's awesome man yeah. i'll vote for you thank fuck you yeah bro thank you hell yeah you got the comics <laughs> vote will you will you <laughs> promise do. to make math easier because. Oh, for sure. That's one of my. <laughs> that's one of my big platforms. Make math cool again. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, your yeah. little hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny, dude. Uh, yeah. So that, that I'm glad you asked. That's why I got fucking Kevin Lyons, best that's co-host right. ever, watching my back. I'm sitting on the sidelines, just waiting for my time. <laughs> <laughs> I have the one sneaky play, coach. <laughs> Never did I expect him to answer with, "Uh, be president." Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, what beat that future guest. <laughs> you have a potential president sitting goals, here on the podcast, man. Your goals are actually, your goals are actually very similar to Trump. <laughs> I want to have right. a TV show and be president. Right. That's, <laughs> right. That's how you do it. That's right. That's how you do it. You two might be the only ones that have yeah. ever had both those same goals. Yeah. Working a thousand days in a row, not taking a break. <laughs> and then you try to help Israel Palestine, but you really fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> very similar. Yeah. Very similar. What do you got coming up, dude? Um, so well, you're, in, uh, you're doing the college in Oregon tomorrow. College Medford, in Oregon. Oregon. Uh, what else is coming up? Um, I'm doing some. I'm doing some shows in the Bay Area next week. And then uh, my 11 year anniversary of stand ups coming up in beginning of June. Probably just be doing some local shows. I don't have anything like big, big local here that I'm promoting in okay. LA, but um, you can find me on, on the webs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. Well, uh, here, let me get through my shout outs here really quick. Um, some Instagram shout outs here. Shout out to Unlimited Candy. Unlimited Candy. My boy, Ryan Bell. Hey, Ryan. Uh, <coughs> excuse me here. Jay Finnamore 33. What's up, Jay? Sun Sun 1. Thanks, son. Uh, my buddy Mel Diaz. How are you, dude? Thanks What's for up, the support Mel? on Instagram and and, uh, and uh, support always. Uh, Mike Hawk Easy 323. The way you said that sounds like Mike Hawk. <laughs> I think that's what they intended. Or is it Mike that Hawk? Is, yeah. It's Mike Hawk, but I think that they uh, they d- intended that. And Cesar Lopez. Those are the shout outs for this week. Uh, guys, I'm going to be at uh laughs unlimited in sacramento this weekend 
Friday, uh, the ten, uh, uh, yeah, Friday, the Friday night show, the late show. Um, the next week I'm at Flappers on Wednesday, the the late show at Flappers on Wednesday. Uh, next next week, actually, if you're listening to this, it might be this week. Well, this Wednesday, <laughs> come on down to Flappers. Um, what else? Uh, and then uh, Saturday, this coming uh, this not th- this coming Saturday, I'll be at the Ice House with Uncle Joey. Nice. Uncle Joey works out. Oh yeah. And that's it. Wait, not this Saturday. Not this Saturday, but I mean, by the time this podcast comes okay. out. Yeah. I was about to say, you have any dog sitting for I, that? Th- no, <laughs> I think it's Memorial. I think it's Memorial, the Saturday before Memorial Day. I think. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Isn't is it not this Monday, but next Monday? Yeah, yeah, so next yeah Monday. So that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, I have that day off. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. So that that's fucking it. Congratulations on your viral video today. Thank you. And your Thank one thousand and one. <laughs> Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> we won't count the one after that. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's really cool. You got an award for it. Yeah, you know. We'll with your with your people. With my peeps. And your actual friends and family that yeah. were, that were. I mean, that's the be- best accomplishment. You got to fucking kill in front of them in your hometown, your home club. How cool is that, bro? Yeah. It's fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh no, just uh thank you for thank you for uh bringing me out here. Thanks for Definitely coming on, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad awesome I got to have you on. on. I'm glad you were in town. Have a safe flight. Um, Thank you. Don't forget, you guys, bullymake.com. Use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, and you're going to get $10 off your order. Listen, you can sign up for a year, 12 months. You could do half a year, six months. Or if you just want to try the box once, you just get the one box. And make sure you use the promo code to get 10 bucks off. Uh, so the promo code is HOME, H-O-M-E, Home Like Homeschool Podcast. Um, bullymake.com. Just get a box delivered to your door. Treats, dog toys, do it up. And don't forget about... Uh, to click the link in the description, dmcwatch.com. Uh, DeLorean Motor Company makes watches. They're fucking awesome. Check them out. Make sure you use my link in the description. Also, guys, do me a favor. Recently started a YouTube page, so I'm putting all these uh, podcasts up on YouTube, um, and I need to get my subscribers uh, on there. So please do me a favor. It's a, the, uh, the channel is just called Augustino Zoida. Uh, that's my channel. Just just go just go on there and, uh, and hit subscribe, please. That's pretty much it. Kevin yes. is on Twitter and Instagram. Yep. At the real Kev Lyons. <laughs> That's right. And uh, I'm at Augustino Zoida on everything. And you guys know how to spell my name. Otherwise, you wouldn't have found this podcast. Um, and uh, Sammy, what's your ha- what's your Sammy S A M M Y Obeyed O B E I D S A M M Y O B E I D at Sammy Obeyed on Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, all every, that everywhere. Stuff. Tattooed you, on my chest. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for coming on, my Kevin. Pleasure. Thank yeah. you for having my back on no this worries, episode. No worries, man. <laughs> I love it. We'll Thanks see you guys for hanging next out, week. Jamie. Yeah, thank you.